In the previous lesson, I showed you some different methods for creating named ranges in your worksheets. And in this lesson, I'm going to show you how simple it is to use them in formulas. Now we can see the named ranges that we've created by clicking the drop down arrow in the name box. And you can see we have all data, company, profit and revenue. Blank cells is one that we created in a previous lesson that isn't really relevant for this particular lesson. So we're just going to focus on these four. Now, once you've created your named ranges, you can use those as opposed to cell references when you're putting together a formula. For example, if I wanted to sum the revenue column just here, instead of typing in equals sum and selecting this range of cells, I could simply use the name. Now, there's a couple of different ways that you can do this. If you know the name of the range, you can simply start to type it. So I've typed in rev and you can see underneath it's recognized the named range revenue. I can simply press the tab key to select it and you'll see that it will highlight the corresponding range in the table of data. I can then simply close my bracket, hit enter and it's going to perform that calculation. Hi from everyone at Simon Says It. We hope you're enjoying this training lesson. Please like this video to show your support for the channel. If you want to take your learning further, earn a certificate for this course, and gain access to over 200 courses ad-free, click up there and go to simonsaysit.com. Thanks for watching and back to the course. Similarly, if I wanted to count the number of items in the profit column, remember with count, we can only count numerical values. I could type in equals count, now I could start to type in profit, there is the named range, but what about if I can't remember what the name of the range is? Well, another method that we can use is to simply press F3. What that will do is bring up the full list of named ranges in your workbook. So you can then take a look through these and select the one that you want. So for me, that's gonna be profit, close the bracket, hit enter, and I now get my count. Let's do one more. Let's type in count A. This time I am going to count the companies. So I can use company, press the tab key, close the bracket, hit enter. So hopefully you get the idea as to how these work. Now if we just look back at these formulas that we've created here, another advantage of using named ranges is that they're a lot easier for people to understand. If I was to send this spreadsheet to my colleague down the corridor and it just had some and then some cell references, it's not immediately obvious what those cell references refer to. They'll have to look in the worksheet and marry up the cell references with what they're seeing. Whereas if we just have some revenue, it's fairly obvious that we're summing the revenue column. So it really does add to the readability of your worksheets. And of course, we can use more than one named range in a formula. So let's say I wanted to add up the revenue and the profit columns. I could type in equals sum and I could say revenue. Let's select it, comma, and then I could choose profit. Close the bracket. And remember, if we want to check if this number is correct, we can simply select both of these columns and glance down in that status bar at the sum total. So named ranges, super useful, not only when it comes to navigating around your worksheets, but also for putting together readable formulas. Congratulations on reaching the end of this training video. Continue your training in Excel 365 for beginners with the next video in the series by clicking over here. For more related training videos, click over here to watch this popular playlist of free learning resources. To see more videos like this one, click below to subscribe.